everybody, and welcome to episode 7 of the Power Toku Show DX. I am Josh Reed, and here with me is the Kamen Rider Chalice to my Amine! <laughs> I'm the heart guy, yeah. <laughs> so, what's going on, uh, Sentai Seiya, Luis? Uh, we're back after a couple weeks off. Josh was recording, or working on, you know, his uh, Toku that he's doing, and... Uh, Got a little too into it. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a little, I had a small back injury, but we're good now, so don't yeah. worry about it. So you can go back to doing backflips and all that kind of nonsense. I can go back to doing twenty backflips and. You know. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So Taking, that's coming along good. Yeah, everything's coming along pretty great. Cool. Um, I posted some pictures of the current suit minus the helmet onto uh, Twitter and Facebook. So if you guys aren't following following me, you guys are seriously missing out on the production of Cardbart 3. So you're going to add some more cardboard to the design? I think somebody mentioned that there's not yeah. so much... Yeah, Cardbart's a little cardboardless. Yeah, that's kind of the point now. Uh, it's like... I'm, I'm giving away slight spoilers, but uh, he gets an upgrade in Cardbart 3, uh, and he moves beyond the power of cardboard. Mm. All right. So move to plastic. <laughs> One day metal. <laughs> <laughs> One day he'll be made of metal. He'll be a Gokin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you want to jump in and catch up with the news uh, for the past couple weeks that's been going on the Collection DX? Yeah, let's jump right on into Toy Talk. Yeah. Okay, guys, the first bit of news that we're going to talk about is SIC, Kamen Rider Wizard Flame Style. This guy looks pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the latest in their SIC releases. And I just got to say, this thing looks fantastic. I'm really digging the jewels on the chest, how they made those pop out more. They really stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really awesome. Uh, this definitely looks like something I might be picking up because if you guys follow my reviews, I uh, did not enjoy the SH Figure Arts <laughs> release of this guy. In fact, I believe my exact words was, uh, if someone tries to sell you this figure, you should punch them in the face. Yeah, you sold that figure. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't read my review. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I would have found you and just... You know, stuffed you in the face. They would have just immediately punched me. So the wings and the leg things, I'm guessing those are upgrades? I have no idea. Oh. So this wasn't in the show? No. I don't Alrighty. ever remember this being in the show at all. So this is just not taking some extra liberties with the design. It might be either in a novel or perhaps in a movie that we haven't seen yet. Mm, okay. You know what, they, they might even actually say it up in the uh, top. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I read the description earlier. I think it said what the parts were, but it doesn't say where they come from. So. Did it say it came with freaky bird parts? Um, it said all the way up yeah. to the top. Okay. Na, na, na. Magical essence for the world of wizards. Blah, blah, blah. From an aerial reconnaissance by summoning the equally detailed red Gerudo ply monsters that includes hand parts, red Gerudo bonus, which are Gerudo accessories, and... Okay, I guess it has something to do with uh, the Gerudo ply monster. Okay. But it didn't show up in the show. In that kind of a form with the uh, wings and those things on the feet. I'm trying to think it might be... Like their SIC version of his uh, flame dragon form, but I'm I'm not I'm not seeing it. I don't. Mm. Okay. Well, it looks cool either way. Yeah. Uh, so it's coming, I believe, in September. Yep, it's actually getting a U.S. release, so it is coming in September 2014 for 58.99. Yep. But that is not. The only SIC news we are covering today. <laughs> Josh's a little excited for the next piece. SIC Shin Common Rider. I love Shin. 
<laughs> it's interesting that they're doing this in the SIC line because we're getting the SH Figure Arts this month, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a, a May release. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. next, next month because it's still not May. <laughs> It'll be May by the time this is out, yeah. which is like tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow is May. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, uh, this thing looks spectacular. And one of the things that I love is that even though this is an SIC release, it's basically exactly what you saw on screen in the movie. So um, I was looking at the pictures of the figure arts, and this one looks a little bit bulkier. So is this more true to the uh, movie than the figure arts release? I think they're both pretty accurate, actually. I mean, they look very similar. Um, yeah. That's why it's kind of weird that they would actually release this so close to the SH figure arts line. Uh, releasing their version, you would think they would give it some room to breathe, sell out the uh, SH Figure Arts, and then bring out the SIC. Well, I think it's coming uh, later this year, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's you know the month oh, yeah. after it comes out. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't really give it much time. I mean, the, the Figure Arts is coming out this month, and you know, some, some, maybe some people are going to skip the Figure Arts and wait for the SIC because this is coming out. And it's coming with this. This is what I wanted with the SH Figure Arts. So, do you care to explain what this is? I don't want to because it's something we're going to talk about in a later episode, but... Is it spoilerific? Is, yeah, well, oh. it, it's not really spoilerific, it's just my favorite part in the movie. Mm, okay. Just, this is an important piece that this figure needed to come with, and I was so disappointed whenever I saw that the SH figures didn't come with it. Mm. So, you going to pick this guy up? Absolutely. So this and the uh, wizard are going to be on your pre-order list? Oh yeah, absolutely. 100%. Nice. I cannot wait for this guy. <laughs> yeah. are for, you those who are, for those who are unaware, I really love Shin Kamen Rider. <laughs> yeah, but kind of a fetish form, huh? <laughs> I think it's moved beyond fetish. Uh-oh. <laughs> And with that, let's stop talking about Shin. <laughs> yeah, let's stop before we start getting into fan fiction territory. Yeah. All right, so next up. So let's check out something on the SH Figure Arts line. It's Kikaider from the same show, Kikaider. And so basically this is coming out in September for about 4,800 yen, I think. Mm -hmm. And the reason why this is being released is because they are rebooting the Kikaider series he, the new version is going to have a crossover with, with uh, Kamen Rider Gaim pretty soon. And that's set to launch the movie for that franchise. But because of that, we get the original one in SH Figure Arts form. I am so excited for this. Yeah, so this is a lot like what they did with uh, Space Sheriff Gavan. When he had his crossover movie with the Gokaiger. Or, wait, no. He did crossover special with Go Busters. Yeah, he did, but uh, he also had this the crossover oh. movie with the Gokaijers. Yeah, you're right. And then he had his own movie, which didn't do too good. <laughs> no, it was terrible. And they were like, well, we still got to try to bump up Metal Hero some, somehow. And they brought uh, Gavin Type G into Go Busters for mm -hmm. a couple of episodes. Yeah, so since that didn't pan out, I'm guessing that they're trying to revive Kikaider and get a new franchise going. I hope it does really well because the trailer looks fantastic. Mm. It's a problem with Japanese movies sometimes, though. The trailer will look good and the movies, so-so. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I really yeah. loved the uh, Gavin movie, so I'm probably mm. going to love this movie. It's kind of like the uh, Gotcha Man movie. People are really excited for that. And then I've heard it wasn't that great. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. I have Sh to see it. With Shinken Red. <laughs> I have to see it. It's yeah. Gotcha Man is one of my things. I gotta see it. I'm with you. I'll watch it. I may not like it, but I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, think this is a uh, Tamashi Web exclusive, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, it is. Um, probably not going to be released in the U.S. through Bluefin. I'm guessing. Uh, we haven't heard anything, uh, but it's coming in September, so there's still plenty of time for us to uh, hear. But yeah. Right now, it's it a, seems very unlikely. Yeah, he, it's a very niche toku. So odds are it might not be getting an official release. 
So if you want it, you'll probably go th- have to go through your uh, middleman. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it looks cool, though. Very yeah. retro. All right, and let's jump back to the SH Figure Arts line. We have Kamen Rider Ryugen Budo Arms. And Michi. So this, yeah, Michi. The guy that started off as a nice guy and not so much anymore. No, <laughs> yeah. no, he's not. Not at all. Yeah, he's a horrible human being. <laughs> he's just had he's had the biggest transformation since the beginning of the show, but we're going to talk about that later. Yeah. Right now let's talk about the design. Um so, his design is basically based off of like a Chinese style suit of armor and grapes. Yeah, and they did a good job. Chinese armor plus grapes equals exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm not a big fan of the design. I like the other common writers a little bit more than him, but I actually already pre-ordered mine because mm-hmm. I think it's going to be pretty lonely to have the other guys and and not have Michi there. Yeah. To pl- to plot against them all. <laughs> yeah. To try to murder them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so this guy is already up for pre-order. Um, what's the retail price? Retail price, um, thirty-eight hundred yen. Okay. Cool. And it is, in fact, a mass release figure. Yep. Which I, I knew it was going to be anyway. He's one of the main four, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of sucks that we couldn't get Bravo as a main release, but. Oh, well. I will be forever spurned <laughs> by Bandai for that. I still find it weird that Bluefin didn't pick this up to release it here. The uh, Kamen Rider Gaim stuff in the SH Figure Arts line. I mean, it's such a popular show. Everybody seems to be loving it. You would think these would sell pretty well, even here in the States. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll just have to see. Uh, a lot of their Kamen Rider stuff that are bringing over has been mostly just, like, pick and choose. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, unlike the Sentai stuff that they just bring in in droves. But the thing that's weird, though, in the last show we were talking about Hibiki, and I was like, there's no way they're going to bring that over to the States as a regular release. And they pick that as a regular release in the States. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I thought, uh, are they at least bringing Gaim over? No. By Bluefin? Okay. Nope. No Gaim. Uh, nobody else in the Gaim uh, SH Figure Arts line. Super weird. Isn't it? Yeah, like, even the main writer would have made sense. At least just Gaim. Uh, maybe even Baron. Yeah. It's a weird choice. Yeah. yeah I would have so. liked to have a stateside option, because uh, whenever I have the option to buy from Bluefin instead of just getting it from overseas, I almost always go with the Bluefin release, because mm-hmm. it's just... It, it's 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 already here. It's it's there. Yep. And they're great. I mean, great customer service and all that. When you deal with uh, distributors that sell or with companies that sell products that are distributed by Bluefin, so I've never yeah. had an issue. Anytime I've had something that has broken that I bought from Blue, uh, that I have bought from Bluefin, it's just been a quick and simple process. They've just been like, "Oh, we are so sorry that happened. Here is a replacement. We are sorry." And I'm just yep. like. Fantastic customer service. And I know a lot of the Japanese companies don't even deal with that. If you get a broken figure, that's what you got. Yeah. I mean, they don't deal with exchanges overseas, so... There are a couple that will, um, but Bluefin is always great about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully my Kamen Rider guy message figure arts don't come in broken. (laughs) Yeah, because then you would be SOL. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, I think that's it for the toy news. Yeah, let's hop into toy reviews. Yeah. Well, and I some say, not to- and some not toy reviews. <laughs> I, I say toys, but uh This is a review that Dekun did. Mecha Me- Hopzilla. Is this from the movie Mecha Hopzilla versus Godzilla? No, it's a uh, Mecha Hopzilla versus Hopzilla. <laughs> yeah. So this is a uh, some beer that a friend got him, right, uh, in um, New Orleans, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And I remember so, when he came over because we were all having a big gun club party. And so uh, he walked through the door and just kind of set that on the table. And I was just like, that's cool looking. Yeah. So this is still being made, right? Yeah. But um, Toho basically put a stop to them distributing it outside of a... Uh, Uh, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So you have to actually drive into, you know, New Orleans and get one of these. 
Um, so it's cool. It's got a nice, you know, package. It's got some metal content. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's a chill goke in here. Uh, there's some, uh, there's yep. some goke in here. Yep. Uh, there's also uh, a a yeast goken. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know what we would call that. Yeah. And it's also compatible with your late night partying. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I hear it is also very compatible with peanuts. Really? Huh. Mm-hmm. I think he said it has a sweet taste, right? I have no idea. Oh, you didn't read the review? No. Why would I read a review? You're a horrible friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a chance to taste it then or no? <laughs> no. No? Ooh. Mm. So then d a horrible friend because he didn't let you taste it. <laughs> <laughs> he probably would have, but... yeah. It's not really my thing. Really, you don't like this? Is a craft beer, right? Craft. Uh, I think, I think I that's know. what you mentioned. It's a special beer from New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a different review. It's kind of cool seeing it on the site. Yeah, I think it's the first time anyone has ever reviewed beer for this site. Yeah. This is gonna launch Beer DX. <laughs> yeah. BDX. Yeah. <laughs> Make it happen, guys. <laughs> uh, all right. So, he said it was a good tasting beer, good metal content, mm-hmm. and so uh, pretty great articulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, packaging looks pretty nice. Comes in a pack of four, which is good. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it would be nice if they had other options uh, to have uh, either just a one pack if you weren't feeling uh, willing to get all four uh, versions at once. But you a know su- what? Get a super party pack of like twelve. <laughs> yeah. So, very cool. All right. Now that we are done talking about beer, let's jump to toys. Ultraman Noah. In the Ultra Act line. So this is a review by Gasbot. Um, he's, he's new. A, I, I don't think I've seen him on the site before. I think he's done a couple of reviews. Um, I think he did one of the real action hero figures from Ultraman, if I'm not mistaken. Um. But he's fairly new. He's done a couple things here and there. Um, he said he picked this up at a local shop. Mm-hmm. I think for he said, I think he said for like about eighty bucks when this guy was going for like over a hundred online. Yep. Yeah. I think and, he's actually a he might be a Tomashi Web exclusive. Okay. I think so, but I'm not up on my Ultra Axe because I'm neither. a terrible person. <laughs> That's alright, you're better off than I am. I'm not even up on Ultraman, so... <laughs> so he's from Ultraman Nexus. Yep. Uh, if right. you remember, they did a uh, movie called Ultraman Next. Um, I, I think it was 96 or 97? Mm. I don't know. It was It was definitely in the mid-90s. It was. Uh, it leaded into the Ultraman Nexus series, and it was supposed to revamp the Ultraman franchise. Which it almost did. But didn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, yeah. that, that was around the time they started j- jumping into movies only and stuff like that. Mm, okay. So, this guy looks pretty cool, though. He's very unique. I like the uh, that red piece on his chest. Looks yeah. awesome. And he's got those wing things, whatever they are. Yeah, they're wing things. Yeah. Not quite... Ah. Uh. You know what they remind me of? Um, in Gun Time Sword, the main mecha in that had, like those type of wings sticking on. Did you ever watch that anime? Nope. Okay. So then never mind. <laughs> you would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, the audience might know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I think his name was, the robot's name was Saudade of Sunday. Anyways, it had something similar going on. But that was like a big sword that transformed into a robot. And this is not that. So um, he was pretty happy with this. He says it's a lot more durable than previous Ultra Act releases. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. A lot of the newer Ultra Axe are much better quality than they were starting out. Mm-hmm. He made, uh, he specifically mentioned that uh, after about a day of playing his Ultraman Hayata, which is the original Ultraman, which was the first Ultra Act, I believe, and uh, it actually, like after a day of playing with it, all the uh, joints got really loose mm. and stuff. And he said that hasn't happened with his Ultraman Noah. Which would make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Lately, the Ultra Axe have been fantastic. Yeah, Bandai just keeps getting better and better with all of their toys. Mm -hmm. They just keep improving. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, yeah, I don't think he really had any complaints. He said it looked good. It, it was uh, fun to play with, and he also liked, you know, displaying it with his other Ultraman stuff on his mm -hmm. case. He did mention, like, right here, the uh, paint is a bit uneven and weird looking. Yeah, it looks like it's running a little bit across its face. So, but that's when you look at it super close. Yeah. Yeah. That kind if of QC it, stuff generally happens on smaller figures. Yeah. I mean, if it's sitting on the shelf, you're probably not going to notice something like that. Mm -mm. Comes with a couple effect parts. Yep, his specium ray. And some other things that he has no idea, and apparently no one else on the internet knows what they are. <laughs> they pop onto his shoulders, and there's some kind of effect part, but... Uh, yeah. There's They're something. Energy shoulder pads, for some reason or another. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, he's got a lot of cool pictures. Um... Very good review by Gazbot, and he mm -hmm. actually has reviewed three things so far. The Ultraman Hayata from the Real Action Heroes line, and the Predaking, and this would be his third review. Okay. So, he's fairly new to the site. I approve of his uh, Power, Lord, Power Lord's choice. Yeah. Good job he, on that. His scale party, or size party, as he calls it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Shall we jump to the next review? Yeah. Let's jump on in. Okay. Next up is Zen in the Makai Kado line. This review is done by Ghost13. Ghost13 again mm -hmm. with another super stylized action figure review. Yeah, he likes his uh, stylized figures, the Makai Kados and the SICs. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to pay Tamashi Web exclusive prices for them, so yeah, he's really into it. I mean, I would probably do it for Zen because Zen is awesome. If is you've he? ever seen... Uh, Yamiwo Tarasemono, which is the third series of Garo. Overtime dubbed it the one who shines in the darkness. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, Zen, obviously. He's the one who uses his sword, as you can see in this image. Uh, but he's played by uh, the guy who played Gokai Silver. Oh, okay. In I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I haven't watched this season of uh, Garo yet. <gasps> oh, it's so good. I really I... loved it. Yeah, so I gotta you, get around to it. Have you? Did you stomp after uh, Makai Senki? I got like halfway through Makai Senki, and I was really busy with school. Mm. And so now if I want to watch the rest of Makai Senki, I feel I have to start from the beginning. Yeah, Because I forgot that. a lot. Of, You'll get yeah. a, a lot of uh, heavy things happen towards the end of that, and that leads into uh, um, Dragon the of the Blue, whatever the movie's The Crying title Blue was. Dragon of, yeah, you know what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah. Whatever, that movie. So, I really like the finish on that. It's got that red metallic paint job. It looks pretty sweet. It looks really good. And the thing that I love about the uh, Makai Kado line is that um, it is basically like a subset of SIC, but since the figure, since the characters in the show are already super stylized because it's, you know, a Keita Amamiya show, so obviously there's a lot of grease and grit in the design, so... I mean, this is basically plucked right out of the show. So one cool thing about this design, and it's got those tusks, and it looks like a boar. So that's pretty neat. Um, different from the other Garo designs in that manner. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's got, like you said, that stylized look. Um, it's very poseable, you know, for the most part. Because there's a lot of like flared pieces and stuff sticking all over the place. Um, that does restrict the movement of the toy quite a bit. Mm -hmm. He said that the, uh, I think the wrist joints were hard to move because you have those cuffs on the arms that get in the way. Mm -hmm. But he seems pretty pleased with it. Yeah. Um, and that kind of does a bit more detriment to uh, this character. Uh, normally in a Goro series, uh, they're using actual suits so, you know, the guy is fairly restricted in their movements anyway, and they just use CG sparingly. But in um, this show, they pretty much went all CG whenever they were using the uh, suits. Mm -hmm. And so they're, like, super dynamic. Like, their legs are flinging over their heads and random <laughs> things. They're, you, they're doing yoga in the middle of the show? <laughs> yeah, basically that's that's what ha what's happening. But, uh, oh, okay. You know, it, it still does its job pretty well. Mm -hmm. 
I bet he's got a nice collection of these going. Oh, yeah. Ghost 13, since I know you watch the show, I want you to post pictures of your collection so I can see them. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> you have been commanded. Yeah. So, a good review. Tons of pictures. Mm hmm. Just an awesome job all the way around. Yeah. So, the next thing we are going to talk about is this. It's the Gokai Spear. Review done by a guy that goes by the name of J-Man. Yeah, I hate that guy. Yeah. It's one of the few guys on this site that I hate. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a jerk. We should go take him outside and beat him with a baseball bat or something. Yeah. Him and Sentai Seiya. We just oh, team up on God. both of them. <laughs> both of those guys together, I just want to pummel their faces in. Mm -hmm. So, this is the Gokai Spear from Kaizoku Sentai Gokaija. One thing that's funny, we went from... Uh, reviewing a figure of this actor to reviewing this actor's weapon from another show. Hey, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> when I threw together the notes, I just, you know, threw the uh, stuff in whatever order, but it worked out that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of big, uh, and it's also a giant fork. Mm -hmm. So I kind of ran out of room uh, in my photography area, so that's why you see bits and pieces of my kitchen counter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, fork mode looks pretty good. Uh, it's got anchor mode, which is that right there, which is basically fork mode with the little thingies flipped around. Mm, okay. And then you've got gun mode, and it's super tiny. I have a picture with my... See, look at that. Yeah. Can't even fit all my fingers in there. I can yeah. barely fit two. But, you know, this is meant for kids. <laughs> it is meant for children, so, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> There's no use in us complaining about the fact that it doesn't fit our adult hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, but the sounds are fantastic. The sounds are ripped straight from the show. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Bandai of Asia release, so a lot of times these releases are slightly different from the Japanese versions. But uh, luckily this is ba the like identical to the Japanese version. Mm -hmm. Packaging's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but not by much. And then you get that extra Ranger key, too. Uh, I, I believe this also came, the Ranger Key also came with uh, the Bandai of Japan release. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Because it seems like Bandai Asia with the uh, Gokaiser stuff, they were getting that extra key, but I guess this is one of those cases where it's the same mm -hmm. between both releases. All right, cool. Yeah, and I mean, the key, it is a, uh, it's a Ranger Key, and I knew that people were going to want to see it since this is a new review of an older toy, mm -hmm. so... There's the size comparison between the American and the Japanese Ranger Keys. It's a huge difference. I know. <laughs> it makes the Bandai of America one, ones just look puny. <laughs> but it also sets up a really good point because the Bandai of America ones, their details are so much better than the Bandai of Japan ones. Mm. Like, the head sculpts are so much better. And they're so tiny. Now, the uh, Dragon Ranger Key, is that a Gashapon Key or is it a regular key? No, it's a regular key. Oh, okay. Cool. It's a regular full DX key that came hmm. with uh, uh, the Bandai of Japan release. Yeah. So, I mean, they might be bigger, the uh, Bandai of Japan ones, but like you said, you get a little bit better detail with the American version. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So far, uh, I mean, overall, the Gokai Spear was pretty great. You get exactly what you want. Although, um, I was expecting the... Uh, handle to extend like a telescoping feature to make it a spear but it doesn't at all i wonder if that's just like a safety issue maybe they thought kids were going to just extend it out and make a huge weapon out of it i don't i don't know but i, I feel like it's a missed opportunity mm. i mean that that could very well be the case and in which case you know that's fine because I know the first thing I would do is if I could extend it out and make a spear, I was going to run to Deacon's room and just start hitting him with it. <laughs> yeah. Because when you look at a lot of the uh, Power Rangers and Super Sentai toys, they're fairly smaller, so maybe there's some sort of dimensions they have to stick to to keep these toys safe for kids. Maybe. Well, and I mean, a lot, of, a lot of the. Yeah, and Deacon's. <laughs> a lot of the smaller stuff is. Uh, is because they're made for ch children, so you know they don't want some kids lugging around some giant thing. Plus, it helps keep costs down. Mm -hmm. I just, 
I really wish it at least extended a little bit because the way it is right now, it's just a fork. <laughs> it's not a spear. I can't call it a spear. It's the Gokai fork. You can use it to eat your spaghetti with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So um, I think that's it, right? Yeah, that is it for toys. <laughs> Okay, so that's it for toys, and now let's talk about our shows. Yeah! So, there was no episode of Super Mega Force in the last week or two, because uh, they stopped at the Silver Linings uh, Part 2. So, we don't have to talk about any Super Mega Force. Nope. Which is good, because we can jump right into Kamen Rider Gaim. Okay, so, uh, the last couple of episodes have been pretty much fantastic. They've been keeping the story going, which this, at this point, this is pretty much unheard of for a Kamen Rider series. Mm -hmm. They have literally had, like, one episode of filler, and even that introduced a new Kamen Rider. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Agito. It had a really good pace at the beginning for, like, the first two thirds, mm -hmm. and then it had, like a, like, a filler arc towards the end. Yeah. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen with Gaim. Even if it does happen, I'm fine with it, because at this point, it's just story, 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 every single episode. Yeah. I mean, it is to the point where, at the end of an episode, I'm just like, I can't believe that was it. Yeah. I want more. <laughs> Give yeah. me more, right now. <laughs> Come on, Toei. Yeah. I mean, it's it's gripping at this point. Mm -hmm. So much drama is happening. Um, you know, we haven't even talked about what happened in the show, basically... Uh, Michi is starting to show his true colors. He is uh, um, trying to save the world, but he understands that people need to be cold in order to be saved. And um, he just wants to keep my safe. And uh, Kota reveals to her that um, he killed Yuya because when people eat the fruit of Helheim, they become the Inves. And so, you know, she now knows everything that uh, Yggdrasil is doing, and she wants to tell the entire world, and so, basically, Michi is just super mad. Yep. He drops some uh, lock seeds and has the monster attack the uh, Beat Riders, so that, that way the people think that the Beat Riders are still behind the attacks. Mm -hmm. Which is smart when you think about it, because now that takes away, you know, any credibility they had with the general public again. Especially when they called everyone together and it was like, we have an important announcement to make, and all of a sudden, boom, Inves. Yeah. So we had that happening, and then we also have Baron fighting the uh, Red, uh, whatchamacallit? Overlord. Overlord, yeah. yeah. The Red Overlord. Um, have you noticed how the Red o Overlord and Baron are kind of similar? Oh, yeah. They, they both like to fight. They're both seeking power. So it's it's pretty ironic that they're engaging in battle this whole time. I think that I think that's purpose purposeful. I think that's going to come back and you know, I think it's going to mean something mm. later on. And uh, they keep referring to them as apes and mm -hmm. stuff. And so it's almost I don't know, I kind of have an idea of you know where those particular overlords came from, but uh mm. whatever. We'll see. So, you also have common writer Gaim trying to talk to the overlords and be like, hey guys, let's be cool about this. Yeah. Uh, let's let's uh, figure out a way where the earth doesn't get destroyed or taken over by Helheim Forest. And, um, of course, Michi doesn't like that, you know, um, Kota is interfering with his plans. So, he shoots Kota in the back. And then, uh, when Kota is untransformed, he tries to kill him. He thinks about it, though, so... Um, I mean, he hesitates. Um, who knows if we would have gone through with it? Luckily, Baron was cool enough to stop him from killing Kota, but yeah, it got pretty intense. Yeah, it did. Yeah, uh, Michi's turning out to be one of my favorite characters in the show, mm -hmm. just because of how he progressed. He's one of those characters you love to hate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish I could like him more, but he's definitely going down the wrong path. He's going down the wrong path, but I think it's it's good for his storyline. He has had probably the biggest change of character in the entire show. Yeah. It's and like I him and Bravo. Bravo started out just being like this, 
I am here to destroy you all. I shall be your reckoning. And now he's like, ooh, I'm in love. Uh, yeah. But he was always goofy like that, though. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. they ramped up his goofiness, I think, in order to uh, keep the show, sh- uh, the other show's ground color, if I can speak, <laughs> to keep the other show's characters more grounded and, um, I don't know, to keep the drama up. Mm-hmm. It's good comic relief, too. Mm-hmm. When you get hit with so much action and so much story, it's good to laugh in between. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and at the end of the last episode, we had Gaim teaming up with Zangetsu because uh, Takatora, who is Zangetsu, realizes that Gaim also wants to save the world without any casualties. And he's totally up for that. Um, we get that flashback to when uh, Takatora was. Uh, testing the prototype of the Sengoku driver mm. and um, he basically gets hurt you see uh, Sengoku Ryoma you know, showing that he cares for Takatora and you're like oh he wasn't a bad guy the whole time but then you find out that Ryoma was basically just using Takatora to, to have him fight the overlords basically in the same role that he has Baron right now mm-hmm. so it's cool to see when the uh, paths of those two characters started diverging uh, not to mention that uh, Zangetsu had no idea that the Overlords even existed because mm-hmm. uh, Sengoku Ryoma was just, like, holding all of that information from him. So when Gaim was telling him about it, he was just like, What? Why <laughs> haven't I heard about any of this? Yeah. He's the guy overseeing the project, and he knows nothing of of this uh, Overlord business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Very cool. Um, most of the characters are starting to learn everything that's going on, and the dynamics are working really well. Yeah. Yeah. So far, Gaim is awesome. And it is. it's been awesome since day one, so hey, hopefully it'll keep being awesome. Yeah. I don't see the show, you know, slipping. It seems like they really put a lot of thought into the uh, story, all the mm-hmm. different arcs, the character progression, and everything. So I think it's going to be keep going good. Like I said, at worst, maybe we'll get a, a filler arc later on. Yeah. But even then, there's been so much good story in the past, like, what, 26, 27 episodes that, yeah, they've done just an awesome job with the story and the characters and everything in this show. I mean, we are at the halfway point at right now, so I only see things getting more high stakes as we go on from here on out. Mm-hmm. They also revealed in the uh, last episode that white overlord that kind of showed him a little bit from behind. So, mm-hmm. yeah. He seems to be the one calling all the shots. Yep. I yeah. still want to hear... I, I still want to see, you know, what exactly DJ Sagara is. Yeah. Uh, one cool thing about this is, is if you're uh, watching the um, Acer subs, is that they're translating what the overlords say in their little language... And then they're encoding it into another cipher. So if you really want to know what they say, you can take the time to decode the uh, cipher that that they're using. And it'll give you a little bit more uh, plot and you can figure out what's going on a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to do that, though, because I've heard it's kind of spoilerific. So I'm going to wait to see how the story progresses, you know, not knowing what the overlords say. Yeah. Okay, so episode 8 of Tokyo was basically a giant speed ripoff. Uh, it is the introduction of the Diesel Resha, and uh, basically a lot of people thought that the Diesel Resha was going to be the 6th Rangers Resha because it's kind of orange. But uh turns out to just be uh, the uh, Red Rangers extra thing. Yeah, he gets two Red Reshas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway... Um, uh, Tokati gets a uh, bomb strapped onto him by the monster of this week, and if he, like, is jarred or stops or anything like that, it'll explode. Mm-hmm. So all the other people running around like Keanu Reeves trying to find a way to uh, stop the bomb. Yeah, they have to catch the monster mm-hmm. and press that little button on top of him to stop him. So it was cool. They trick him, basically, by using the transferring system with the Tokyo changers and they trick him into thinking that uh, they got the bomb off of Tokachi, uh, but they didn't. So that's how they solved that issue. It was a fun episode. Nothing really of consequence. I mean, they got the, the uh, diesel Russia, but besides that, just a fun episode. Yep. 
that's pretty much how all the episodes have been so far. Yeah. And then episode nine was the one where uh, Sango Yellow basically falls in love with the guy who saves her from an attack by the Kuros. And it um, uh, turns out it's an evil plot by the Empire to uh, get all these women to fall in love with just random men. And they have this marionette monster that breaks their hearts. The cool thing about Yellow, or Sango, is that she went into the date with the guy, or the meeting, thinking, um, I'm going to duel this guy. So she was in love with him, but she was also, she had that like almost tomboy mentality where she didn't want to be protected. She wanted to be the one fighting. So when the monster tries, tries breaking her heart by having the guy uh, stomp on the bento that she brought him, She's like, well, I was coming to fight anyway, so you're not going to make me cry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, it was really cool. Actually, I think Sango uh, Yellow is becoming my favorite female character in the show. Um, they're developing her a little bit more than Pink. Um, mm -hmm. It was a funny episode seeing her, you know, dealing with love and fumbling through it. Um, she, ca she can't really, you know, you know, cope with those feelings quite yet. She's still uh, like a tomboy almost, yeah. So that was a fun episode. And then in the next one, we had the monster that types out different like titles for like movies or like a novel or what have you. And basically whatever he types out is gonna happen. So first he types out adieu or you know, Sayonara, uh Russia, and all the trains just disappear, they leave. And then he types out Tokachi dies at dusk. So it becomes this, you know, dramatic thing where he's going to, you know, have to do some training, fight against time, figure out a way to defeat the monster before he dies. And he does. Basically, he does that by pressing the buttons on the monster and altering the title so where he no longer, well, he dies, but then he's revived again. And so with that one, another just fun episode, they had the uh, baseball playing kid thrown in there. Uh, he couldn't see the Russias. And so, basically, Tokachi teaches them what it's like to have an imagination. It's not just about, you know, thinking about something. You also have to act on it and work towards what you want. And so the kid thought that as long as he wanted to be a good baseball player, he would be. But through Tokachi's actions, he saw that you have to actually work for what you want. So it was one of those, hey, kids, you know, you got to do, you know, you got to put your time in to become what you want to become kind of uh, episodes. Um Again, Diesel Russia shows up in both episodes, plays a pretty pom prominent role. Uh, we're seeing the diesel o now. Uh, still no Cho Tokyo, though. Uh, but, like you said, just, just fun episodes. Yeah. Do you have anything to say about those episodes? Nope, I haven't seen them yet. <laughs> so I just spoiled it for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to spoil a Super Sentai show. Yeah. Hey, they win at the end. <laughs> well, we could talk about the end into Jetman. That would be a spoiler. But we won't. <laughs> Do not make me feel feelings at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I mean... Oh, the Black Condor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're going well, to if... have to recommend Jetman at some point. Yeah. So, good fun. Uh, the... Um, the Shadow Empire is still waiting for their um, lord or whatever they're calling him to show up. It seems like he's pretty close to making an appearance on the show. And are you also creeped out by Greta? Yeah. Because she looks like a giant baby. Baby, yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh, you're going to make a great wife for what's-his-nuts. And then she's just like, yeah, no, I want to marry this random old man. <laughs> and I'm just like... It looks like a giant baby. I keep putting her in the slideshow so we'd talk about it, but we, I keep forgetting to mention it, so it's a good thing you brought it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah. Ugh. I'm hoping at some point she, she trans like, transforms into something that doesn't look like a giant baby. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really odd. Um, who knows? She could be like 100 years old for all we know. I know, she, I know she's more than likely probably like a teenager or something like that going mm -hmm. into an arranged marriage, but... yeah. She looks like a two-year-old, <laughs> and I don't, I don't approve Japan. Yeah. Change her design, make her morph into something that's not terrifying. Yeah, you know that's not going to make it into the U.S. version. <laughs> mm. 
Well, I don't know. Yeah, Probably no, not. Yeah, no pedophilia for the U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah, generally the U.S. tries to stay away from that. Yeah. So, yeah, just fun episodes. Uh, can't wait to see the Cho Tokyo O show up and see what it does. It probably uh, shows up and beats the monster of the week. Yeah, pretty much. But there's a couple things on the design for it that I want to see what they're all about. Like he's got those things sticking out of the shoulders yeah. that look like cannons. Uh, I want to see if they actually work like cannons. I mean, they're basically the um, one, the uh, the cars, the box cars of one of the other, the couple of the other Russias, and the other shoulder I believe is the diesel Russia's head. So they could be cannons. They look like they work that way. Anyways, that's for another day. Yep. I believe we are done with most of what we're talking about today, except for the recommendation. Yeah. Well, we got that special thing in the, at the end of the show, too. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so... All right, so here we are at the recommendations section of the show, and we're going to talk about Kyo Ryuja versus Go Bastas. This was a pretty awesome movie. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. So many dinosaurs and dinosaur uh, sentai in it. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, okay, so Griff Ozer, we know in the U.S. as... Um, um, Goldar? Goldar, yeah. I don't know why that slipped my mind for like two <laughs> seconds. I was like, everyone's going to be mad at me for Goldar slipping my memory. Anyway, so basically there is a revamped Goldar in this movie, and that makes me super happy. And that villain from Abba Ranger. Yeah, that one guy that was yeah. in, that was also in uh, D uh, Dino Thunder. Yeah, so it was cool that we had a throwback to those designs. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to come out in the U.S., it seems like a no-brainer. Oh, yeah, it yeah. has to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is prominently featuring the Zhu Rangers. Mm -hmm. And probably one of my all-time favorite things is that they actually brought Geki back. They brought mm -hmm. his actor, and he is absolutely Geki. He is just... He is geki in it up. Yeah. So they bring him back, and they bring back Abba Red, and mm -hmm. also Blue from Abba Ranger. Mm -hmm. Abara Blue, yeah. <clears throat> So, but that's the only actual like in-person cameos we get from the dinosaur Sentai. Yeah. Everything else is just voiceovers. But luckily, I believe they did get all of the actual actors to do the voices. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was super nice. Yeah. So, I mean, as far as story goes, it's your usual Super Sentai versus movie. They find someone's a... turned evil. Yeah. Fight them. <laughs> they find a way for the villains of. Uh, the, the two shows, in this case multiple shows, to team up and, uh, you know, they hatch this super big plan to destroy the universe or the world or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean, story-wise, nothing groundbreaking, but it's got a crap load of dinosaurs and dinosaur sentai. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, I mean, whatever. as a fan of Go Busters, it was nice to see them show up a little bit more than I thought they were going to show up. Um but, of course, it was all about the dinosaur sometime. Mm -hmm. One Them thing doing... that I thought was interesting is that uh, Geki, whenever he transformed, he was using a Power Rangers Legacy Morpher that they put Geo Ranger stickers on. Yeah, I noticed that. That's pretty cool. I was just like, mm, look at you, Japan, taking something from us. <laughs> Which I'm yeah. totally cool with. Yeah. I wonder if they just no longer have like the, uh, the Morphers from the, or the Dino Bucklers hanging around anymore. Um, it's possible that they didn't, that they don't have any of those props or anything like that, but yeah. no, I'm fine with them using the Legacy Morpher because it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. Pretty show accurate, yeah. So, it was a good movie, I mean, just fun. Mm -hmm. The little kid inside of me just enjoyed the crap out of it. Yep. Yeah, so many dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs all over the place. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, it would be a no-brainer for this to just come into the U.S. Mm -hmm. I think just fans of, you know, the original Mighty Morphin and Dino Thunder are going to like checking out the movie just for nostalgia's sake, if nothing else. Yeah. So, guys, you may have noticed there's a big pile of junk 
behind me, that is because I'm moving and I've been like looking at all my stuff. And so I figured now would be a good time to go ahead and do a giveaway. Yay. So what we are giving away this week is this. SH Figure Arts Cho Akiba Red from season two of Akiba Ranger. And this toy has been touched by Josh Reed. It has. It has been touched, caressed, even <laughs> licked by me. So if you guys want it, you know you do. I'm not gonna lick it. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but I'm but I'm not. We're gonna get nobody entering the contest. Yeah, people <laughs> will specifically tell us to that they don't want it. Yeah. They would want us to burn it. Yeah. Anyway, all you have to do is be the first one to email us at powertoku at collectiondx.com. With the answer to the following question, Luis, let him have it. All right. In the very first episode of Akiba Ranger, Nobu stops in front of a toy store. What is the Super Sentai robot that he was oogling? The one that was expensively cheap. So expensively cheap. So expensively cheap. (laughs) All right. And that's the question. So send us an email. Don't Google it. Use your own mind. Yeah. Or watch the episode, at least. (laughs) Yeah. If nothing else. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, that was actually the last segment. Yeah. Yeah. I believe uh, that is it for the show. Mm Mm-hmm. We are done here. Uh, Hopefully, we'll be back next week. We're finally caught up with all the shows. Yeah, let's hope, because uh, next week is my official move-out date. So, yeah, we'll we'll see if... (laughs) I don't know. We should we should be having a show next week, but uh, yeah. just in case. You can talk as you're moving stuff out of the room. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just have a camera just like on me the whole time. Yeah. If only you can set up like a GoPro to stream. <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. we'll rig something up. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, that is the end of it. My name is Luis, also known as Sentai Seiya. You can catch me at Twitter. At Sentai Seiya and on CDX, uh, talking about Super Sentai stuff. Uh, last week was some Saint Seiya stuff, which most people on this show probably don't care about. But next week is going to be a ton of Super Sentai stuff that we're going to talk about. I'm going to mm-hmm. review a whole bunch of trains. And yeah. Josh, what about you? I'm Josh Reed. I am J Man on the site. You can find me on the Twitters at J Man DX. And that's pretty much everywhere you can find me. Mm hmm. But before we go, I would like to talk about one more thing. So guys, for those of you who have been paying attention, we actually started a new YouTube channel called CDX Games. It is all about members uh, of the staff running around playing video games. Uh, The first few episodes had me and D-Kun playing some Trials Fusion, and the last few episodes have just been me playing the stanley parable Mm. but we have a lot more content prepared to uh go live and so you guys should go ahead and subscribe to that channel can you give us a teaser of the stuff that we can look forward to yeah sure Okay, guys, welcome back to the Stanley Parable playthrough thing that has suddenly turned into Portal. Uh. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. Your forte. Okay. Genius. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. Yep, it is. Cool. Yeah. So, it's a very odd game, the Stanley Parable. Yeah, it is. Pretty odd. Yeah. I watched a couple of your videos. Um, yeah. Is there a point to it? Yeah, there's, there, there, is, there is a point. Um, okay. Uh, I think the final episode of my five-part Stanley Parable series uh, went live today. It's actually funny. I went out to do the Stanley Parable. I was just going to do uh, 
you know, a one single episode sit sit down playthrough and after about 20 or 25 minutes I just said no it's going to have to be more episodes than this cuz it just kept hooking me and I just kept mm-hmm. playing it. So that's one thing you can watch. And you have uh, plans to do some Toku games on the channel, right? Mm-hmm. We have plenty of things planned that you will find out later. One of them is the Super Nintendo Kamen Rider game. Cool. I was going to keep that a secret, but whatever. <laughs> so, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff. So head mm-hmm. over to CDX Games. Yep, and we'll have a uh, link in the description for you. Okay. So... Like we said, I think that's it for the show. Yep. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, don't forget, send us an email. Show at collectiondx.com. Let us know how we're doing. Tell us uh, you know, what kind of recommendations you want to see. And don't forget, we have that giveaway you can enter to win. So, thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>